Adam Taxon here, continuing the day of the memorial service for Darren Dalton. I am with Ricky Jordan, former first baseman and pinch hitter for the Phillies in the early 90s, I guess late 80s too. And uh, he's out of baseball, the baseball business, back in the Northern California, Sacramento area. And but we'll talk to him about him. But first, I'd like to get your memories of uh, Darren Dalton. Well, definitely, Darren will be missed. Um... He was the leader of our team in 1993, but not only was Darren a great baseball player, Darren was a great person. I mean, he would do anything for any of us at any time. And um, he's definitely gonna be missed and my condolences go out to his uh, wife and his family. You were a little older than some of the other guys. Uh, you were already an established player by the time he was starting on the team, right? Actually, Darren was a little, he started before me and um, I came in behind him. He was a couple years older than me, so I came in behind him, but he was one of the ones, him and Mike Smith, that kind of taught me the ropes and Sam Well and them and really helped me out when I came up in 1988. Mm -hmm. And it was a little tougher of a time for the Phillies uh, then. What, you, you came in in the late 80s and I remember your rookie year, you were a really big deal. I remember that, I was in Philly that summer. I'm from the Philadelphia area, I forgot to mention okay, that. Okay. Lifelong Phillies fan. Uh, and. What was it like seeing the team gel under his leadership? You know, you'd been there during some rougher years, and then 93, it came together, and you were a veteran by then. Yeah, it was actually great, because my first year up in 88, I was there with Smith and uh, Sam Well and Kevin Gross and all, and the team wasn't very good. They kind of uh -huh. struggled, and we were dead last all the time, and then next thing you know, 92, we were dead last, and here comes 93, we turn it around and go from, you know, worst to first, and but Darren, Lenny, and Crook, those were definitely the guys that really helped us turn it around. And I'd say Darren pulled all the strings right with all of us. You know, he was the top dog on that team. And like I said, man, he's gonna he's gonna be missed just as a genuine person too, not just as a ball player. Mm -hmm. What um, can you give an example of his leadership when things weren't going well? I had Wes Chamberlain on my show a few uh, weeks ago, and he talked about how he was a young guy and. You know, you wouldn't think of talking to him now because he's so, you know, such a gentleman. But he said, no, I was a little rough around the edges and I needed Darren to sort of show me around a little bit. Definitely. He went, I mean, if the young guy was struggling, he'd come over and try to pat you on the back and lift you up, you know, if your spirits were down and stuff. But if you also messed up out on the field, he'd get on you about it. You know what I mean? Hey, you need to concentrate a little more. You need to work at this a little more because we're working all working hard here to get to somewhere this year. We got a good thing going and let's let's try to get it to go all the way for the city of Philadelphia. Uh-huh. Do you miss uh, Philadelphia at all? Oh, I definitely do. I mean, I, I love Philadelphia. Uh, in the winter, I wouldn't want to be there because it's cold, but uh, being a California guy, but I love the city. Food, family, friends, you know, and, and just, just overall the, the fans there. I mean, they understood the game uh -huh. and they were blue collar people and they wanted you to get out there and get after the game hard. And speaking of blue collar people, people may be curious what you're up to right now. I'm, I'm actually back home in Sacramento, California with my father and then we have a construction company uh, that we've had for 35 years. So I'm back in the family business, just doing that business is doing well. and. Uh, so that, and I have two kids that are in college and uh -huh. married, so um, everything's well right now. I'm just blessed to, to be doing good right now. When they say the 93 Phillies are a real blue collar team, uh, Ricky Jordan clearly is blue collar because he's, he's doing construction right now. Any final thoughts on Darren or just, uh, you know, his legacy, things you've learned from him, things you'll remember? Well, the love, definitely. I mean, he was always a lover. He gave you that, that pat and smile and that kiss all the time. He just showed the love no matter what adversity you were dealing with or, you know, anything going wrong. He was always a positive, upbeat guy. And I think that's what I'll take, you know, remembering him as giving me that kiss and saying, hey, how you doing? Cool Papa Bell is what he used to he call me. Cool he used to call me called Cool Papa Bell. Papa Bell. So, that's I an interesting you, name. I, I Wasn't Cool remember. Papa Bell a he very fast, fast? I mean, not to fast. be judgmental about your base running ability, but that's not what you were no, known for. not at all. I wasn't very fast. But right. Tony Taylor was the one that told us the story about Cool Papa Bell. He used to play in the Negro League. Yeah. Said he could come into the room, cut the light switch off, and be in the bed before the lights went out. That's how right. fast he was. So, and Darren heard Tony calling me that, and Darren kind of took to it and he called me Coop, Coop Papa Bell all the time. So that, that's a special Just trying to figure out how you have. got that nickname. Yeah, not with no speed, but that was just yeah. a, a name that Darren liked to say to me. And so I'll, I'll never forget that. All right. Well, thank you, Cool Papa Bell or Ricky Jordan, as he's more commonly referred to as. Uh, thank you for your time today. All right, thanks for having me.